Hello everybody and welcome to Total Annihilation Replays. Today I'm bringing you Game 3 of the Postal vs. Aprox Best of 10. And I am your host, Postal. So you'll be... Of course, I'm very sympathetic to one of the players in this game and in this series. Um, and today the map that we're going to be bringing to you is uh, John's Pond. So this happened... this game is one day after the previous two here. So this is the next day. Um, and we are continuing the series, and this is Aprox's pick. You might be wondering, well, you said you're playing against uh, N1 Aprox here. Uh, how come this, who's this Willie Z, Will ZYX guy? Um, and that is Aprox's Smurf, who he apparently didn't want uh, other people knowing that this was his Smurf, but he didn't do a very good job of, of hiding it. Um, at this point in the game, like, if somebody just came in and started winning right away, there, it was generally assumed that you were a smurf. Um, there weren't people who just came in from playing the AI uh, who were good enough to, to win at the top here. So now the map is John's Pond. C is very important in OTA on John's Pond. Basically, he who wins the C uh, wins the game. Now, the thing is, um, this for me is actually good for me. Um, John's Pond was one of the maps that I actually could win at um, as core, and I actually had a decent build and strategy, and as long as uh, things went well uh, in the beginning, and, and basically as long as he, he didn't go air against me, I was going to commit fully to the C and try and win this game um, really hard. Now, I'm just chatting about me. I was practicing the Revolutionary A2 by Chopin um, at the time of this, so I was talking about how my left hand is a little bit uh, uh, sore from that. Um, because I was playing it for, you know, nearly three hours before playing this game. Aprox, you can see he's walking two mexes. I have only walked one, so I've done two wins and a metal extractor start, and I'm going vehicle right away. Aprox has done his two wins, metal extractor, walked a third, and is dropping a third win, which is, um, that's kind of a standard build. Um, what I'm doing is, you know, I don't, it became relatively, relatively common, um, and then Aprox, okay, Aprox is going air. So this is actually a, a weakness of the build that I'm doing. Um, Aprox says he doesn't know anything about music, and that he only listens to it. So Aprox air first, which is a, a legitimate play on this map. One of the things you got to pay attention to is you can see there's these Ulox right here. Um, they provide uh, all kinds of, you know, 50 metal each, 150 energy. Um, so if you go bomber, bomb them out, and then you swing up with a air con, you can pick up uh, 250 there, and then another 300 there. That's a full lab's worth uh, worth of it. Uh, same thing down here on the bottom. So you can basically grab all those Ulox. Um, you can see what I'm doing is here is I'm actually prepping a little bit for air, and you might be wondering what's my commander doing. I'm actually reclaiming my vehicle plant. I'm walking into the water and then using my con to finish the reclaiming job that the commander started. The goal being is essentially to have my shipyard up by about the two minute mark. You can see really nice fast bomber from Aprox here. Um, that is the benefit of him walking two mexes. He could put up more winds and still have enough metal to get his bomber out. Uh, and so his bomber is done right at the two minute mark. And I'm in the water. I'm, I'm getting wet. But I have a single missile tower on land. And in comes a bomber, and this is the weakest. I'm at, I'm at my weakest here. I can't pump out a slasher. The only thing I can do, he, he immediately gets the uh, the metal extractor, and you can see my metal bar. I'm pretty short on metal too. These cost around 100, um, and he's going to come in. I nano block there. You can see how I threw up that that frame of a wind under construction. Use that to drive the bomber off. He's taking another run at it. He's going to try and tag it between this narrow angle right here and he manages to get it. I now have no anti-air defense other than a searcher, which isn't the best at this. You can see I'm stalling now on the uh, the metal extractor, and I managed to shoot the bomber down. Unlucky for him. He says, der. So that actually that actually saves me quite a bit. Um, I am sending out the, uh, the searchers, and I should be going over here to cover the Ulox, but instead I think I'm going to cover his, or I'm actually, no, I'm trying to counter raid um, with my uh, searchers. So now I have had to, I've had to walk back up on land here. So yeah, that's the, the weakest point. Is because I didn't build two metal extractors, I was short on metal. And so it's actually been, it's hard for me to finish, um, finish these things. You can see he's actually building a, uh, 
a missile tower on the land there rather than reclaiming. So this ends up paying off for me. He's got his second bomber out. I'm certainly not out of it at this point. Um, I just am really struggling with the resource department. He deguns one of my searchers. That prevents me from uh, from raiding the mexes and the winds. Um, and so that's really good positioning by Aprox there. I could try and come in down here, but he could just take a few steps, hit me with a degun, um, and I'm not able to uh, to prevent that. So my commander's on land here, and just now I'm getting my vehicles moving again. There you go. You can see I'm trying to come in and raid. Just want to get a mex. He comes in from this angle right here, gets a mex and a win. At this point, I know I'm in trouble. He's had two mexes up the whole time where I have not. He's got the winds marked. Nice run by Aprox there. Gets two of the winds, damages the metal extractor, and marks the other missile, missile tower. See, I've got my shipyard idling right now because I'm just, I'm simply not making enough. Bomber comes in for another run. He flies it off screen before it can actually get hit. Manages to tag the wind and get the metal extractor at the same point. At this point, I'm in big trouble. He's got another bomber out. It'll be coming towards me to keep me extra busy. I still have my two cons. It's just against error. I don't think two cons is enough build power. I know other people might disagree with me. Um, I think you need... This is the point is if I still had my vehicle lab up and he was coming out with bombers, I would have been a little bit more patient, put out my cons, maybe a slasher or two, um, knowing that uh, I could eventually outbuild him in the water. But because I went for the fast sea start, um, and you can see it didn't really pay much by way of dividends. Didn't get the raid on him. I control the sea, but to what advantage? Um, I don't have any build power in the sea right now. Got three missile towers up. Absolutely no energy production other than uh, the shipyard and the, uh, the two cons on the common. Got the searcher just kind of patrolling, see if I can keep him off the Ulocks. Um, but you can see he's got two cons up here right now and he's built multiple air cons. He's just going to try and prevent me from expanding with my construction units. I guess possibly to save myself here I could have quickly reclaimed the sea, built something on land, um, or I just could have uh, tried to push a sea con out. In comes the bomber, coming from a different angle this time. People usually like to come from the angle over here because the higher elevation um, means that there's more time for the missiles to shoot the bomber, and then swinging it out and left. So my trap pick here isn't uh, isn't working for me, and it's not it, my pick rather, but the the map where I was hoping I could I could pull a win by getting him on one of his picks. Um, is not working out for me. Now I have more metal extractors up because this, these two have been up for a while. You can see his comms starting to expand. I think he may have, yeah, he's starting to build this max right there. Coming in for another bombing run, even though I just finished this, he's going to go ahead and clean it off. I don't even know if it had a chance to pay for itself. And the bomber gets away, even though it gets, it charged three missile towers, it gets away and survives. So that's just terrible for me. You can see over here, Badly damaged, but that is totally okay, um, according to Aprox here. So now I'm starting to rebuild, get some more searchers out. You can see our metal production is about equal right now, but just this kills to death. Um, a lot more of my metals worth of stuff has been destroyed. See, he's building his um, land right now, which is a, I think it's an okay play. Um, going C is probably the better choice because, again, controlling the C is really important. But he probably thinks, okay, well, at this point, he can outbuild me because I didn't build any additional construction units on land. He actually has me blocked off here. I will need to walk my commander on or build land units now to get that out of there. I can't win that with a single con. It's possible I could sneak in and drop a Dragon's Tooth, but core um, construction units, they just don't deploy as quickly as arm ones do. So it's kind of hard to get that nano block going um, with the nano frame going with the Dragon's Tooth. Uh, 
I actually don't know at this point. I haven't scouted over there. I try and come in here to scout with my searchers. I figure, okay, well, I'm just gonna have to do my best. I'm gonna try and kill this missile tower and kill that metal extractor and then get out of there. I realize he's got missiles on here. My construction unit is taking a hit. Almost gone. And it goes down. Definitely the game is firmly in Aprox's hands right now. Managed to get away with a little bit of raiding. I trade one searcher for it. Actually, maybe even more because of uh, really bad positioning here. Another bomber's out. See, now if I can see that air, these guys will shoot. Well, they, uh, their missile prioritizes air, so I can actually camp the pad and stop them from producing more bombers. You can see at this point, though, my commander is now taking a walk because I intend to go and degun him off of, uh, off of my island. Another bomber run. Again, just excellent bombing by Aprox here. Perfect run. Gets all of his targets, and the bomber gets out alive. Well, let's see. There it goes. Yeah, bomber goes. He just, with that one bomber, he wiped out all my resources. Brilliant run there. Well, except for these underwater resources. Something I probably should have done a little sooner. Committed more to a little bit of build power in the sea. Uh, Aprox has gone sea now. And he has more build power on land. He controls half of my uh, my island. I think we all know that we're going to be moving from 1-1 in the series to 2-1 in favor of Aprox. So I see that he's sea. He sinks two of my searchers. That metal is just his to reclaim. My commander is now going for a walk. Trying to beat one, two, three, four, five well-spaced um, missile towers. You can see I'm already down to half health. And I managed to get them all. I go in, might as well capture. Here comes a bomber. <laughs> I capture his, uh, his metal extractor. And my commander at this point is very weak. He's still got a scout over me. I bring my searchers up to provide air cover. See me reclaiming a tree there just to rebuild my energy. These sea um, resources take a lot of energy. So now, sure, I may have secured all this area with my commander, but I have next to zero build power um, on the land. RVD says it's going to be a winnable, just just so you know. It's like, oh, thanks, RVD. And I'd respond to him, I know. Um, and I say, I knew as soon as he went bomber, and that's true, the weakness of my start build uh, was bomber. <laughs> he, says, he says, I knew you knew I would go bomber. That That's not true. I actually was hoping he wouldn't, and that that's how I was going to win. Um, was just basically on picking the right build to go against him with. If I knew he was going to go bomber, I would have definitely built up a bit more and see. So now you can see he outnumbers me in the sea really easily. RVD is correct. This is unwinnable. You can see he's got his left his his side entirely capped, whereas I don't even have close to that. I've got to build more resources on sea. You can see I'm going vehicle again. Sorry, resources on land. I've got one, two, three underwater metal extractors done. That's not really enough to to be an advantage. You can see he's already at 25 compared to my cool 14 metal and next to no energy. Yeah, see, I said I thought uh, you would go vehicle to sea, actually, so I would have been better prepared. I said, yeah, I got time for another today. Again, I'm down to next to no resources. Massive Skeeter fleet just waiting to demolish anything that comes out of my harbor. I don't even have much by the way of missile tires. You can see I'm barely even capped here. I'm actually using my only con for energy because that's what I'm short on. You can see he's just trying to damage these. Uh, you can damage arm metal extractors underwater, but not core ones uh, using this, these ski lasers. So I've got three missile towers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven searchers against his army of more than 20. It's not going to be enough. He'll get both of these cons. He claims the sea and therefore the game. See, so he's got more missile towers over here. 
Since this is the best attempt, you can see he's trying to bomb these. It's the same story. You can't bomb core ones. RVD says you can't kill the core ones. He's like, they're, he says they're like subs. But he doesn't need to. He can just do what he's doing right here. Fly on the bombers. My missile towers are busy shooting a C. This is one of the things you need that's very helpful on John's pond, pond is just air to do the scouting. So you can see I have absolutely nothing. Stalling out on missile towers, still trying to defend against bombers. So he's not marking, he's just kind of generally memorizing the position of where things are at. It's not too hard to do um, if you're staying focused on bombing. He says self D so I can play more games because it's late. I'm very reluctant to do it. I said I'll go with that. I accept his terms. We could do one more game um, in exchange. So there you go. That is Postal versus Aprox game three. A very, uh, very fast victory for Aprox there. He just picked the, the right strategy, showed up at the right time uh, to take me out. It wasn't totally unwinnable for, uh, for me to beat air with the way I'd gone. Um, but it's, uh, it certainly would have been when tough to do. You can see just the ending resources here and really the big, the name of the name of the game here, right here, you can see the kills, the losses, all that, just an excellent bombing by Abrax to keep me completely, um, completely out of resources and I just didn't have enough build power to beat the bombers. So, all right. I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, another trip back down memory lane for me. The series now of this best of 10, um, is, uh, two to one in favor of Aprox. So up next will be my pick, and we will see uh, what I choose. Make sure if you have not subscribed already, uh, please do so. Uh, also hit that uh, that there like button, uh, and then leave a comment too. I I rumor has it that that actually helps uh, uh, other people uh, find these videos too if that's something they're interested in. So, all right. Hope you all enjoyed that one. You all take care now. Bye bye.